My name is Orlando Briones, and uh, I'm from Houston, Texas. And uh, that's where I, uh, all my businesses and things that I do here is based off of that, my camera boutique. And then also um, where we have like what we call our little HQ, um, small little thousand foot um, square foot uh, spot in what's known as the Heights area of Houston. So we service a lot of the different companies that come in from out of town. But um, it's been pretty cool being in Houston in what you would think would be a a massive film town um, because it's like the fourth largest city in, uh, you know, in, uh, in the United States, but it's actually pretty small. We're more of a technician town. Um, and this town uh, kind of caters to a lot of the commercials and things that are coming in. So a lot of the money that uh, kind of comes into our town and what keeps us mainly busy is of course um, oil, gas, commercials and that stuff. So we tried to steer a little bit into more of the arts and, create narratives, short films, and build uh, that type of community. So, Hey, so my name is Todd Norwood. I'm based out of Boston. Uh, historically, I've made a lot of um, projects in Boston. I do corporate work in Boston, but um, a lot of my films are about traveling or people traveling to different locations. So I shoot, I've shot all over. Uh, I did a film in Key West and all through Florida. Um, but normally the last few years when I've shot, I've shot either in LA or in the case of my new movie, outside of L.A. in wine country. So um, it's kind of a, um, a weird schizophrenic life in that I live in Boston and I usually shoot on the West Coast. That, um, that might be changing as I'm, as I'm trying to shoot more movies on the East Coast um, to take advantage of the different locations and weather and seasons. And I am, but, uh, but as for now, it's mostly uh, live on the East Coast, shoot on the West Coast. Usually I film kind of all over um, all my projects. Um, we've been uh, the past couple of features we filmed in Mexico. We filmed uh, in New Me Mexico and oh, wow. Al Albuquerque area was as well, which is pretty really awesome uh, to be out there and see the beautiful mountains. Sure. Um, just just recently I traveled. Uh, also filmed in in South France um, in a really cool space. Um, I can't say whose, but it's a very nice. I stayed at someone's um, uh, what's called winery where two famous yeah. people got married and they own it. Um, <laughs> I filmed there for one of their artists and did a really cool uh, docu-series with them. And then also went to film in South Africa to do this cool docu-series on Texas, which should be coming out next year. So, yeah, we film all over. We're, we're just based in Houston, but um, really our, our work is outside of Houston. And uh, anyone that's kind of trying to be um, very real in, in, the, in the film game, right, in the film world, um, you kind of have to venture out and find it, especially, like I said, with our town being so so small. One of my questions I had for you was, like, what's your dream wh What's your dream location to shoot at? And the reason I'm asking it is because you've already shot in my dream location, which is a vineyard in France. So I'm like, <laughs> that's what I've always yeah. wanted to do. And you did it. That's so cool. So uh, that. yeah, um, I think one of my dream locations. I mean, honestly, the, the reason why I love doing what, what I do is because you never know where you're going to go. Like it's one of those things where uh, I found myself like in Peru, right? And we're filming like we're filming in Peru, and 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 we're shooting in some kind of coliseum that was there for a long time. And I was just like, what is my life, you know? And uh, and mm -hmm. sometimes, um, as a cinematographer or even as someone that just loves storytelling. Um, going into places like that where you can just kind of embrace the history and embrace what's what's known. I mean, I I just kind of uh, what what I would say my my dream location is a place where we have complete like control to do what we want to do because uh, yeah 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 exactly. you know what I'm yeah. saying. So there's places that you'd love to shoot and then like right away they all flock and shut you down and all kinds of crazy stuff. So we've, uh, we've had those situations too. Um, and I, I guess, uh, if yours was a, um, if you wanted to shoot in a winery in, in France, um, where else, you know, um, where else, I mean, I imagine right now it's cold, you know, and you're in Boston yeah, right now or I mean, yeah. Well, uh, it is cold. I, I'm outside of Boston right now. The, <laughs> um, uh, I've always wanted to do, I've never done it and I should. And I, every, every October in new England, it's like, as much as one travels, I look around, even as somebody who grew up here, and I'm like, this is the most beautiful area with all the leaves changing. And I would love to do a movie during that time period. And I still, um, I still haven't, but, but I, I would love to um, probably, I mean, I said vineyard, but really I'd love to do a, um, like a movie in Paris or something, you know, just something go yeah. to Europe and uh, you know, you, you, um, I don't know. I just, I love reading about filmmaking stories and, 
uh, just, just, I, I don't know, just being in, being, being a film that's, um, that's also part vacation too. I just love that idea. And I try to <laughs> yeah. con- convey that, uh, to, to the cast and crew. And, and honestly, that's kind of when, uh, when I have cast work overtime, hopefully that I, they feel like it's a vacation. If they're not going to have a trailer and they're not going to have, you know, exotic catering, then at least we can have, a, at least it can be an escape from their lives and they can have really have a fun time. Um, because if, if you're not having fun doing it, um, certainly you got to do the prep work and everything else, but if it's not fun, what's the point? <laughs> you know, so. And that's kind of, that's kind of funny that you mentioned that because a lot of people, you know, they, they always tell me they, we love the way that you think about, how you know how you're producing now how you're taking care of your crew and i think that's one of the important things where it's like you know i I think i did one film in vegas and the guy was like everyone's staying at the circus whatever everyone's staying in a room and i was like no give me my budget i will have to pay out of my own pocket and my camera crew will stay in an airbnb and we'll each have our own room and we'll show up to set you know (laughs) you know um but uh being able to, to 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 take care of those people and um, I think we did one in South, we filmed in South Africa last year and, uh, they said, okay, you need a full week to like get, you know, acclimated to like the way it is here. It's, right. and it literally I'm took done. seven, yeah, it took seven days before we started our scouts. And then from there, um, yeah, we filmed for like 11 days, but, uh, I, I was not expecting it. And I think, uh, even that place, uh, I was surprised how amazing uh, the the cinema world is over there, the filmmakers, uh, people that helped us out there. Um, but it, that's the one cool thing also about just filmmaking in general that you can go to these worlds and, like, and there's a, a crew or a group or someone out there that's living the same dream that that we are and they're yeah. so excited to see you and to help you make your, your stuff. So it's cool. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, just on the note of keep, uh, keeping the crew happy or cast happy, I'm... Um, one film uh, we talked to a, I think it was a school that teaches um, uh, physical therapy and massage therapy, and we said, "Hey, do, can you one of your students come to the set for a few days and practice?" And um, it was wonderful because she got to do it was some you know for uh, study program for her and for the cast and crew. It, you know they had the whole. Um, contraption where, she, where yeah, people could get massages. Yeah, that's so, crazy. so that was a very a great way to boost morale uh, on set um definitely <laughs> that's awesome and and so you said most of your the uh, things you filmed i i saw on your website you have uh what's it called uh, the tropical island lifestyle like that's something that you're really so, focusing on uh, yeah pro- or so, uh, where did that come going from back to, yeah well i mean of course it's everything is is you know find your audience and niche niche uh, your audience and um i i wanted for years to to um i'm a big fan of of you know, vacation type music, reggae and um, Jimmy Buffett and, and that sort of thing, uh, Key West. And I thought, boy, there's a huge audience here because I go to these shows and, and I could I could see this being an audience. And I I spent years trying to raise money for this big film. And I said, I'm going to cast some name actors and da, 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 da. It was taking forever. And then um, I finally said, you know, wait a minute here. I, I'm never, this is going to take years to, to, to get the cast that I want in this Key West exotic location. But uh, while doing all the research for the film, I found all these other musicians who sing in a similar style and have their own very big fan base, not like a fan base like Jimmy Buffett or Jim Bob Buffett. Marley had, for, for example, but they're, they're big audiences. And I, and I would go to their shows and I became genuine fans of their music and I uh, eventually became friends with them. And then I, I redesigned the movie of that particular movie to be about uh, a tropical DJ who uh, interviews all these bands uh, within the narrative. So the, the band members play themselves. But what it allowed me to do is to build up a fan base, uh, kind of piggybacking on the fan bases uh, the, of the musicians themselves. And it was actually kind of fun because we could go to, we could do, we would do um, like screening and a, and a show. So we would screen the movie and the musicians would play themselves on screen. And then, uh, you know, the screen rises and then there's the the musicians doing a show um and so it's it's it's, it's it felt very That's interactive cool. and and it was and it was um it, it kind of felt like because the audience members were fans of the musicians um I, 
I, I don't even want to say it's like um, Rocky Horror because it's not anything like Rocky Horror. But at the same time, it's that interactive feeling you get in an audience, which I love. Like when um, when the the character on the screen, like the the wife, his ex-wife, who he doesn't like, is on the screen. The audience was going boo, hiss, you know, and um, <laughs> and when and when the character was going through some good things, everybody's cheering. So um, I I love that interactive uh, nature of it and. And also having the music. So that's my long-winded way of, of that's how the Island Time brand started. And um, and then since then, I've written novels continuing that story to continue the story because I love the characters, but also um, ex- continue the brand. And um, and that's what I'm doing with my new movie, which takes place in wine country, which it's certainly not tropical, but it's continuing the um, the exotic locations and, and, and sense of following your dreams and adventure. Um, and I suppose alcohol too, when, you, when it comes down to it. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, a, that's such a cool, unique thing to do that. I think a lot of people don't take for granted, especially when you're talking about micro markets. You know, when, when I was growing up, I watched uh, family matters and uh, all those, mm-hmm. um, all those uh, shows, family matters, even fresh Prince of Bel Air. And when Steve Urkel, showed up to Fresh Prince of Bel I mean to Fresh Prince of Bel Air yeah. on one episode. We went crazy, you know, and it's like um, yeah, it's yeah. so cool to to do that with uh with the bands and people that have that those markets because yeah, all of a sudden everyone's cameoing and you know them. I mean, you feel like you're invested in these people and they show up in a grander scale and boom, like it just pops off. So that's that's such a cool and interesting well, yeah. way that you did that. Well I feel like we as filmmakers sometimes or filmmakers try to be like, oh well it's not a real film unless we cast X, Y, and Z. And, and mm-hmm. I don't know, at least for myself, um, it, it becomes sometimes a, a, a cage that you, they keep pacing trying to, you know, you got to get this to do this and this. And, um, and there's other ways to get an audience. And um, that's, I think the most exciting thing about as hard as it is, as it's always been. And it's some, in some ways harder now it's, it's, it's exciting that you can build an audience in a different way now, you know, um, which is, yeah. which is and kind of exciting. Time. Yeah, for us, like we we normally try to do that with our own films. We think, um, you know, my brother's my like he's the main writer. I call him he's the you know the goose with the golden egg. I'm just the one that hatches okay. it and eats it on accident. Um, yeah. And uh, and uh, so you know, every time I'm like, dude, hurry up and finish writing that script so I can tear it up and throw it back at your sure. face, right? Um, and it's the it's the best, um, you know, to to have that. And he's so talented. Um, and uh, every time we're writing, you know, it's always like, okay, who's the viewer? Where's this gonna go? And then my business brain starts popping up and be like, no one's gonna watch that, you know, <laughs> or 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 sure. only yeah. these people will watch that. And how can I get into the market? So um, I think that's that's so cool that 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 you have that uh, you had that kind of mindset uh, going into these things. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's it's so cool, and uh, I don't know. I I think of uh, our film like uh, Fight Boy that that we just did, um, and that one was made for like the urban market. And like I said, we grew up with mm-hmm. li- lifestyle. Uh, we grew up more with uh, like Steve Urkel and those guys, and f- movies like sure, Friday. Yeah. So we kind of took a lot of the ideas of um, anyone that watched this will watch our film and feel like they've seen this movie before because. Um, it's like, uh, it, it's kind of like a Friday meets Scott Pilgrim, but then there's like oh, so much. That's, for a, you cool, to that's learn. a cool, that's a cool <laughs> mixing. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and, 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 and it was fun. And, uh, so far, man, we've had so many, um, people just, just tell us that they, they enjoyed it. It's like a sleeper type film because it's comedy and it's just meant to, you know, have you make fun of, of all these different situations. So, um, but we thought about that, the urban market, um, and where we wanted to place it. Um, and then we found a couple of people, like you said, we didn't find the most famous people, but we, we casted two people. One of them, um, I met on a music video dressed up as a cop. And when he came and talked to me, I was like, there's no way you could ever be a cop, but I'm going to cast you as a cop in a movie. And we literally wrote that script for him. Uh, and then another guy um, named Javier, we literally wrote the, 
the kid's character as Javier. So he was himself in the movie. And that Albert, dude is ridiculous. Yeah. So um, when people are like, oh, my God, your actors are great. I'm like, I mean, they're great at being themselves. And that's what we cast them for. But, uh, but <laughs> they have such good chemistry and it works well. Yeah, they're not the most famous people, but um, they're characters. And, and we're so glad to be able to put them in the movie. And I think, I think the audience enjoys it. Now, are you going to uh, – is your goal the next few years – to continue the same genre to keep going back to that fan base or are you did you want to try something different or like where's your head or is it just whatever kind of inspiration hits you yeah yeah it depends um the first one we did journey that one was more of a drama film and um that was drama the second one was comedy but uh, when we we started a long time ago here in houston like i said it's we're like a small town feel in a massive town you know it takes you an hour to get you know you don't yeah. say uh, what's it? You don't say, uh, see you later. You know, it's like, it's more like see you tomorrow. Cause it's like everything's so far right from each other. Um, and we started a, a little, uh, film crew back in the day called fat kids on the block and <laughs> fat, <laughs> fat kids on the block. We, we did this thing where we allowed them to all come in, get to use all our equipment. And we filmed like eight short films in, in two years, just back to back to back. Okay. And that was a, that was a, a mix of, you know, comedy, drama, sci-fi, like whatever, anything you could throw at it. And let's just try to make it just up, up the ante a little bit on them. And, uh, so no, we've always been kind of like, um, you know, we've always just been wanted to go with like whatever the script feels like. And we have fans that are following us as filmatic because they just know we like making stuff look cool, you know? Um, but, uh, but then, um, also they know that's our stories. Um, they're not going to hit you over the head, but they'll they'll just help you have a pretty good time, and uh, and I think that's really what we're looking for. So the next one we're doing is probably a horror film and uh, uh, horror, horror horror suspense, um, you know um, that style. Um, so we're we're working on it now, and uh, we're we're trying to see if that's if that's the route we take. We might go back to comedy, you know. We 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 have no idea until until we get the person that funds it, you know. So is it a straight a straight horror, or uh, are you going to add elements of your last film with comedy too, or is it? Well, uh, for this particular, thing? yeah, for this particular film, um, we have uh, three. You know how everyone's using influencers and trying to put them in films and that kind of stuff. Well, mm-hmm. we have we have some influencers that came to us and they they want to be in this film and they're known on the internet as comedic as comedy, right? Like these are comedic guys. Oh. But they want to build themselves into, uh, you know, to, to, to be able to test their chops and show that they can act. They don't want to be casted as just sure. comedy pairs and things like that. So, um, of course, we have to write it into to their characters. Um, and that's the idea that, yeah, there's going to be some some comedy involved in there. But for the most part, um, it's going to have more more horror and suspense. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, do you, um, I, one thing that's so unique about yourself that everybody in filmmaking, especially on independent side is, is a hyphenate, but you're a writer DP. That's I've never, I've never seen that. Is that something that you set out to do or were you a DP who wanted to explore himself more and get more creative with writing? Or were you a writer who said, I want to explore visuals more, or was it always kind of both together? Yeah, I think I think it's a mix of things because I was just always like when I went to college, I was the guy that they would always ask me to 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 be behind the camera, like for everything. And mm-hmm. when I left college, I was like, I'm gonna be a director. That's what I want. That's what I want. And this was uh, what 2009, 2010. Rock. Yep. Out my mind was I was gonna do Spanish rock music videos, and rock was already on the decline, right? Okay. So imagine yeah, a. Yeah subgenre yeah. of it you know spanish rock like i'm gonna be this yeah so that was already like the delay of like how that stuff falls off takes a little bit longer so um sure little by little i found more people w- hiring me to be the guy behind the camera again so i moved into directing but i always wanted to just be a director now it's my brother and i can co-direct or do any of that mm. but um no i i think i've i think my hyphen is more producer director of photography because especially on the commercial side and on on even on some of our features because i find the money and then i ensure make sure that the writing is intact for the budget we have and then uh and then i make sure it looks good like that's part of it where 
I'm guaranteeing the person that's giving us money, like, we're not going to make your film look like crap. It's going to feel or look at least, you know, uh, a fivefold of what you gave us, you know, like at least that. And uh, so that's the idea um, all the time. So, yeah, I, I didn't expect to be writing all the time. My brother had had a, a stronger um, – had that was stronger a stronger suit on him but um we just collaborate so well together my brother's very like hey destroy my you know kill the baby you know kill you know yeah, kill yeah, the, yeah. the script yeah, and yeah. you know let's let's make it better that's um that's great you know it's so funny because i i looked at uh cinematography as, as such a uh almost like a alchemy like 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 something wizards do, you know, it's like, I'm yeah. so not a technical person. And, um, and so it, it, uh, I always wanted to write and direct. And then it, it, it's, I, I've worked with great DPs over the years and then, but sometimes we just have two totally different ways of producing, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of speed yeah. and what I'm looking for. And, and, uh, I just, there was a pr period of time where I just said, is this even worth it? I'm not enjoying it like this. I feel like I'm moving mm -hmm. in on set i'm moving in quicksand but i can't i can't um you know explain i can't do what they do so i go back to i i i'm i was a big fan of i think i've read robert rodriguez's uh uh mm -hmm. rebel without a crew book like five times over the years but one of the things that always inspired me what he said is is if you're um you know if you're if you're a creative person you can always learn the tech technical aspects and um, it will help you to be uh, invincible. And it sometimes doesn't work the other way. And so I said, you know, it was actually an actor buddy of mine who said, Todd, you, you, you're your own DP for your corporate stuff. Why don't you just learn how to do it for your features? And um, and it took me forever to say, no, nah, no, I'm not a DP. And so I, I shot a bunch of shorts doing it. So the last few films, I've been my own DP. And I'm, awesome. I'm certainly not the best, but I love doing it. And I love the... Um, I don't even want to use the word control because I don't mean like control, like controlling it, but more just I can steer the set more and it allows me to work with the actors and we can, we can, I don't know if we, if we're inspired by doing something or like, Hey, let's pop over to a different location or uh, yeah, you want to try it in a different tone. Let's, let's do a take that way. Um, I don't know. It just, it's freed me in a way that um, I've enjoyed the last few films that I've been a DP on more than any and, and honestly, that's the biggest surprise of my own filmmaking career is like, if you had told me 10 years ago that I'd be a DP, <laughs> I, I would have laughed. Cause like, I don't, I don't know what an F stop is. Um, but I, I really love it. Um, and it's, um, and it's just a different, uh, it's a different paintbrush to use, you know? And so, um, but so that's, no, that's I, why I asked the question of you being a DP. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, and, and I think directors, you know, should directors, writers should take, you know, DP courses and, they should go in and, and learn the technical stuff. Robert Rodriguez was right, you know, in, in that sense that, um, yeah, you can learn the technical. And, I mean, there's so many things out there now. I mean, I'm looking at you, people's YouTube channels and I'm like, my God, like, you know, everyone <laughs> is lighting so, so nice now and, you know, everything looks so yeah. polished. And and it's great, you know, um, really what what I try to teach people and, and even directors, like, I'm kind of, I coined myself on my Instagram as like the not serious, serious uh uh, cinematographer or filmmaker, you know, uh -huh. so I, I can't, you know, if I have some really cool stuff and I've done some pretty dope stuff, but, and I could be one of those pretentious DPs and say like, Hey, don't touch, you know, don't touch the camera. Don't do that, which I'm yeah, always yeah. joking about, you know, but, um, I really look at it as like, look, we're just telling a story. And the, 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 the idea is like, where do you want to get from A to B and all that? So when you do have that mm -hmm. control, you know, as a director, DP, producer controlling the money helps a lot too. being able to okay we sure. can't do this because the money's running out we got it we got to bounce so i'm gonna get this sunset shot and hey we got it and we got to go you know and you just hope that it, it looks it looks great i mean there's there's so many things that you have to think of as a as a cinematographer um but um overall yeah i mean i recommend all directors to go take a course learn it like you don't have to like there's like three basic or four basic things you have to learn about a camera and uh, uh, just in general, like, and it'll, it'll go across most cameras. And, you know, those are things like, if you don't know, you know, learning native ISO, what's your native ISO for a camera? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, th things like that. Uh, or even learning, like, do I want this shot handheld? Do I want it stabilized? Do I want it on sticks? Do I, you know, and uh, I have like a little mini crash course that 
talks about like the four or five pillars of uh, cinematography. Sure. And it's like a very, very quick crash course that I give to uh, directors I'm working with. So I like make sure um, that we're cre- yeah, we're creating the right visual guide for them. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, what's cool when we're directing and doing our own things and that's where my brother, for example, he's directing, I can tell him all my ideas and he can tell me how they suck. And then, we can go back sure. and, and yeah. redesign the yeah, whole yeah. look of the film. You gotta have that and relationship. Yeah, 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 and and it's fun. Yeah. And and um, and, uh, and yeah, I recommend for everyone. So that's awesome that you have taken control because most people don't. And what happens is that they get stepped on. Like and and the reason why I call myself the non-serious serious DP or cinematographer or filmmaker is because I've been on so many sets with uh, just people who are so like they're so serious about these things and. In in the end, we're we're lucky and we're in a luxury business to tell stories, and yeah. Oh, yeah. that's the way I look at it. Like I won't I won't compromise someone's safety. I won't you know I won't compromise your story either. Like I'm not gonna mess up your story, but uh, we have to make sure we're doing this correctly. And uh, there's a project that I just jumped off of or that I had signed, and I told them myself like I haven't read the script. Give me time. I'm on another project. As soon as I read the script. I'll let you know if I'll stay on it. And I read it and I was like, man, this isn't something for me. And they were upset because I gave them back their deposit and gave them back the script. And, and I was like, I'm sorry. Like, I just, I don't, I don't want to compromise like, you know, um, uh, the safety and all that. And I I don't see how we can do these things with the budget you have. And it it sucks, but maybe I'm not the one that needs to film your, your, your piece. You know what I'm saying? And I'm one of those people where I don't need to take every job. I don't need to take every single script. I, I don't need to do everything. So, uh, it's pretty cool that you took it in your well, hands and, and you shot those and, and they look great. I saw the trailer for a gap weekend. I'm guessing you shot as well. The gap. <laughs> yeah. That one I yeah. co 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 shot, okay. but yes, I learned, I learned on that one. And then um, <laughs> okay. I've subsequently made, made two, which will come out, which are just been post right now. So, uh, but yeah, no, I've learned a lot and um, I, I, I actually enjoy the process now and I, I can't imagine not being the DP, which again, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's the same thing like you were saying with with being a producer too like um i would love to work w- with a huge budget and work with producers but mm. um just to have the knowledge you know um although i have to say it, it does i'm i do have bad habits in that you know you said what's your dream location it's one you control well i'm so used I've, and i've had those locations before but i'm so used to not having them that even when i have them <laughs> I'm like still kind of tiptoeing around and being like looking left and right and going, okay, guys, instead of saying go, I say, okay, instead of saying action, I say, just go, go, you know, start acting. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to call attention to the fact that we're making a movie. Yeah. So I'm so used to doing it guerrilla style that when I do have an opportunity to do it traditionally, I still um, fall back on you know trying to trying to do a bounce card with a pizza box or something. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That's the one cool thing about being in Houston is that like – you can get restaurants, you can get locations, you can be on the side of the road. As long as you're not inhibiting traffic, you can film on the road. Like there's, there's oh, like, wow. so many okay. things that you can, yeah, that you can do here in Houston. Like if you want to shut down a freeway, it'll cost you a little bit of money, but you can do it. Sure. Like it's possible. Um, you know, uh, especially day, uh, you know, when you want to do stuff at night, I mean, uh, there's things that we do here sometimes in downtown with all the sky, with this, you know, with, uh, all the, things that you can shut down a street on uh, in downtown, you know, it's like, it's the craziest thing, you know, because wow. yeah, no, uh, it, yeah. And you, you can have a full police presence. You can have like, it's crazy. And, um, and it doesn't cost you anywhere near like what you would think. And, uh, for it to be as massive and, and, uh, as it is, you really like get away with so much stuff here. And, uh, yeah. So you don't have, you know, you don't have to look around. You just kind of have to look around if you're in downtown for the, um, unsheltered, uh, they're, they're everywhere. And, you know, you just have to watch your gear. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but, uh, but I just, I mean, compared to LA and all the permits and everything else. Um, and I suppose when you're in Texas too, you have amazing barbecue, which is always, mm-hmm. it's always a key, key factor. Yeah. Yeah. Bar- barbecue is definitely legit here. And, uh, w- I mean, we have, that's the one thing when everyone, if anyone ever asks us, what is the best barbecue? Then we tell them you don't know barbecue because every barbecue is the best barbecue, but it depends on what, like, what do you like? Do you like pork ribs? Do you like beef ribs? Do you like this? Because if you like that one, we'll take you to this spot. Or if you like this thing, we'll take you to that spot. And, like, these places, sure. like, all of them have great stuff. But if you want, like, 
excellent stuff, well, we have to take you a certain spot for that, you know? So it's, it, it's so fun. living in the North Northeast, um, I'm totally ruined and uh, because my wife is from Texas and, uh, <laughs> she, she, she introduced me to Texas barbecue and I'm like hooked and we can't get it all the time. And I just, I love going because it's, it's, I just love it. I love, I love Tex-Mex food and I love barbecue so much. Uh, which leads oh, me to my, a question for you is, is can you please explain? I loved it when I saw it. Taco journalist. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a, we, I have a really good homie. Uh, his name is Marco. Uh, he goes by Marco from Houston and he's a taco journalist. So uh, he, he got picked up by like the Houston Chronicle, which is our main, our, our main uh, a newspaper mm-hmm. here. And then all our, like the main magazine publications, they pay him to go do these, um, to you know, just show the trends of of tacos in, in Houston and surrounding Houston. But he's he's literally, you know, he's literally traveled all over Texas doing all these publications and all these different things. So he is like a true taco journalist in that sense, right? And so we we did this really cool piece with him. Um, and what's funny is that like I've known Marco forever, and uh, Marco was literally at the at the at the sweet. 16 version the quinceanera of my of my you know sister and we never knew like so far later and we went to high school together and everything that we we're going to like collaborate in that in that sense sure. but um yeah we got to go and eat a bunch of cool tacos and um we're uh we're just testing stuff out and we're selling that piece um we're we're trying to get that into uh one of the um major publications that they can continue that that series going but uh yeah if you got to see the first one they're doing texas yeah, barbecue like, handmade yeah. tortillas like handmade texas style flour tortillas which are insane and they're to die for I, and then you put that big old fat brisket on there and oh my god it's yeah it's a good job to have that's for sure i mean this as a compliment but i hated watching it because i couldn't eat that i was just like this, i'm so hungry yeah. for this and i can't eat it yeah uh yeah, yeah no that's that's so how did you um how did you make the transition to YouTube? Because for myself, um, well, I, I, I did do a web sitcom years ago when uh, when YouTube was in the early stages. I never thought of it as a way to promote my filmmaking. Um, and that's really on me because I kind of, you know, I just thought it was more like, ah, it's YouTube, right? It's just people, yeah. I don't know, uh, talking about selling products or or who who got dumped in their yeah. life at high school that day right um <laughs> and, and and i don't know the last year or so i've um i've just i've fallen in love with filmmakers who who were doing amazing work on on youtube both to promote their own selves but also mm-hmm. for their own just youtube stuff and i really love that you're doing that and for myself my my 2023 new year's resolution was to have a youtube filmmaking a, a youtube channel just for my filmmaking um, clearly we've, uh, we're a few days <laughs> till the new year. So that, that resolution did not happen, but, um, I'm just <laughs> fascinated how, how you got there and, um, and like what, what you get out of YouTube and, and kind of your next steps for it type thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what's funny is that, uh, I, I look at YouTube for us filmmakers, like the people that didn't jump onto Bitcoin when it was first announced. Right. Because yeah. Yeah. if you would have started with the filmmaking channel, you know, about 10 years ago when you knew, had the whole, the, the know-how and all that, your channel would be a lot further along. For me, I was on YouTube. I think it's, I've been on there uh, at least 10 years, um, but I never treated it as like a filmmaking platform. Um, I always, I was the kind of guy that kind of divided it straight down and said, YouTubers, filmmakers, you know, um, which yeah. is completely yeah. like, it, it, it's crossed over um, like in a very, very significant way. Um, and, uh, what's cool is that the majority of my commercial work was all, you know, uh, YouTube, social media stuff, um, creating massive campaigns for Samsung and some of the like more prolific, um, filmmakers, um, on, on YouTube. Um, like I shot some of their whole episodes that were fully funded by some of the stuff that Samsung did. You'd be surprised how much stuff gets funded wow. uh, by them. And some of those budgets were, you know, upwards of the millions. I mean, they're just insane budgets. Wow. Um, So, uh, well, you know, I look at it back and I had one video that went viral when I was doing music, um, way back then I was just showing off like this new guitar pedal that I had. And back then Mm -hmm. that same company reached out and told me, Hey, uh, we have a new version of that pedal. Would you like to see it? And I was like, shut up. Don't talk to me. I don't know who you are. Now it's like, 
please like yeah send me a <laughs> yeah. unit like let, let me check it out and back, yeah. yeah back back then i was like who are these weirdos talking to this kid that's just showing his you know his guitar um trying to you know but now like i couldn't see the future that's why i'd say it's like bitcoin i couldn't see that if i sure. would have continued yeah. on that you know on that journey it would have been something else even if i wasn't the best guitar player. So the, the best thing you could do with YouTube is just start and, and start adding stuff, you know? And, um, yeah, it, we, we took it at like my favorite YouTubers aren't even filmmakers. <laughs> like, it, like I don't, and that's because, you know, a lot of the stuff that they're showing, yeah. like, it's not that I know it, I just understand it already. So it's like, uh, sometimes I want to watch them just for their character and who they are. But like my favorite, um, uh, YouTuber is Mr. Beast. Like, He's my favorite oh, sure. YouTuber yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, and uh, and that was before he got like he blew up and 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 did all that stuff. Like I just liked the way that he created a whole like universe. And I was like, well, that's kind of what I wanted to do with what we're doing. And I created a bunch of these like just silly filmmaking tidbits that actually. I was gonna ask you about those yeah. sketches. Yeah. 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 And those sketches like I love you the can camera literally... one. It's, it's so perfect. Yeah. <laughs> And what's cool about those those sketches is that we can you can literally do the same sketch with like anything like you know uh, mm -hmm. you can say you can do it with like the kind of water that you like you know you could do it with uh, yeah. with, with with you know anything like any the cars or with uh, yeah whatever and it's Pretty a it's a fun flavor. little short yeah yeah and exactly yeah. and and so we we always took it as like okay how can we mimic uh, you know create something that works in the film world but they can take it on and. It doesn't. It didn't do big numbers on YouTube, but on Instagram, and when other people would repost it, it'd get like eighty k views or a hundred k views. Um, and uh, little by little, like I started kind of taking hold of social media, and when I would go to places like NAB or to Cine Gear, people would recognize like what I was doing, you know. And that was cool because then a lot of brands started reaching out, and 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 we do do a lot of uh, brand deals and things like that, but overall my idea with youtube now is to just i think there's plenty of filmmaking on there uh and i'm really just trying to promote and show like my life what i like to do like you know what what um you know just letting people understand like the artistry behind what we're creating so whenever i do stuff there's no like real like uh i'm not sitting down and writing a script or or creating like a, a look or feel like i want our I want my channel to look um, like Mr. Beast, like kind of like anyone can yeah. film it. You know what I'm saying? And then when you see my work, mm -hmm. it's completely different. So it's stylized in that way. I usually give my brother the camera who doesn't know how to film at all. So things are always right. skewed or, you know, or, a little bit yeah. off. But uh, Well, I think but, you yeah. said in one of your videos, and I'm, you said something like the, the personality behind the person or something like. That's right. That, yeah. It, yeah. It's kind of cool. What, yeah. One of the yeah one of the jobs I got the the big the biggest job I got in two thousand twenty one or twenty two uh, where are we in yeah we're about to go twenty four uh, but yeah. the the biggest job I got was uh, a guy you know he had already seen my work but he said he hired me because of my YouTube and he said that it was the personality like just seeing that I was like okay. not that serious about stuff but I did serious work um, that's yeah. kind of what sold him on it and it was you know the biggest project that I've done and. Uh, and he said it was based off of that. So I think show people your personality and show them what you, you know, who you are. And I think, you know, the, if anything comes from it, then it comes from it, you know? Sure. Now, but would you, so I saw that your, one of your films you released on Vimeo on demand. So I guess it's like a two part question. How is that going for you? And then <clears throat> I've been fascinated by reading about filmmakers who, um, who are releasing films on YouTube. And mm -hmm. I've heard, I've heard some filmmakers have some some big success with it in genres that I'm quite surprised do well on it. And I guess do you ever would you ever see a future film just popping on your YouTube channel, you know, for people to watch for free? I mean, what the way that I found Film Courage was asking about Film Hub and like you know going yeah. through that whole yeah. process of Film Hub and stuff like that. So I guess I have a couple answers here. One, we released it on Vimeo. We released, released both of our films on, on Vimeo, um, and they both did well when they were first released. The, my biggest problem has mm -hmm. been with distribution for, forever. I mean, my first film, Journey, sure. we um, our first, that one, uh, we filmed it in 2016, 2017. 
and we're okay. barely releasing it now. So that film, if you if you watch it, you'll see, it was wow. filmed almost eight years ago, nine years ago, and um, yep. it's it still looks great, holds up great, and I think it, it kind of is going to do better with the political climate if it changes. Um, and that's just mm-hmm. because it has to do with like the border. Um, it has to do with uh, immigration and things like that. Oh, sure. It's a yeah. backdrop. It's not the main story, but it's just a backdrop that we created. Um, and uh, that one did did okay on Vimeo. Um, we actually have more traction when we do live shows rather than online. So people will pay twenty bucks to come out to a to a venue, and we can fill up three hundred, oh. four hundred people. Um, and we've done that several times, um, with journey and, uh, also with fight boy. Um, so we'll do pretty good on, um, on, uh, shows, uh, and then online, okay. like it'll, it'll rent, it'll, it'll do okay. Like we'll get a couple hundred, like a uh, hundred or, um, but nothing like, uh, nothing that will sure. pay for the, pay for the film. Uh, you know, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and then the distribution side on YouTube. And I guess I, I want to hear your answer on this stuff too, because, um, for us, like, uh, Film Hub just reached out to us a, a, while, a while ago, and we we did submit both these films to Film Hub, and of course, our film Film Hub, we're using them to distribute these two films, and our initial conversation was to submit them to Tubi. Um, we're still waiting for them to be released, and I understand that's that's how it is. Um, yeah. But then they they said that they're going to start releasing them on other YouTube channels, and. I have a lot of reserve with that right now because I almost feel like if I'm going to put my film on another channel, I rather put the film on my channel to grow let it sure, yeah. yeah, grow my own audience. I mean, it's an hour and a half film. You get, you know, a hundred people to watch it. You, you got, you know, that many hours uh, accumulated to your account, which helps you become monetized quicker. Um, there's so many things that, that there's so many benefits to that. So, you kind of have to think of those things. So I'm still on the fence and I don't know if it's, if it's worth it yet, but I would definitely want to put it on my YouTube channel before anyone else's. Um, uh, and, uh, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, what do you think about that? Well, I, so the last, um, the last, the last movie I did, I self distributed through film hub and I, and I like that experience, but honestly, similar to yourself with your, um, in person screenings, so I, that was the tropical film. So I would go to mu- music events and I would have a booth there and I would sell and I would do really well. And I would do like Facebook ads that geo tagged to mm-hmm. the, the city I was in. So it really worked out well, you know, and I did okay with self distribution. So with gap weekend, I spent a long, long time trying to find, I said, I want to go to the distributor route. And I did find a distributor uh, uh, with Lionheart distribution and, uh, and I really like them so far, but again, we just launched on November 14th. So I can't say like, Oh, Hey, we're doing great. We're not, it's just, this is still early days and we're starting, um, you know, we're starting with TVOD. So we haven't even got to AVOD and, and 2B and everything else yet. So it's, it's a long process with that. Um, so I don't know the next step, like it's kind of depending on how yeah. Gap weekend does. Do I go for distribution again? Do I do myself? But I do have a film. Um, so after Gap Weekend, I shot two more films. And one of them was like, um, I had to pivot at the last minute because uh, there was a lot going on with cast and crew. And I did a smaller <laughs> film. So I spent much less on it. So the smaller film, I might just put on my YouTube, put on a YouTube channel and see like, hey, how's this going to do? Um, again, if you'd asked me a year ago about putting... Um, any film on YouTube, let alone a, a small, like, I don't know, 90s, yeah. feel, 90s feely indie drama type deal, Sundancey type film on, um, Sundancey style type film on, on YouTube. I with, and, and would find anybody, I'd say no, but I don't know. I've <coughs> been watching a lot of different filmmakers. Um, I don't know. I've been following Joel Haver and like five, um, I don't know, just different filmmakers, folk filmmaking movement. I've been fascinated by them and going, gosh, these movies um, have no real genre that a normal distributor would, Mm -hmm. would be attracted to. And yet they're finding an audience. So I, I'm, I'm, I think I might dip my toes in the water with like a smaller project Mm -hmm. and see how it goes. Um, But I don't know. Yeah. I'm the same way though. If I have a distributor putting it on his own YouTube channel, 
Why don't I just put it on mine? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did you see the the email that Film Hub sent out talking about Q3? They paid out close to 700k to to filmmakers from just YouTube and Stash, um, Stash no, on movies. No, I didn't. See wow. Okay. Yeah. So they sent that out, which kind of made me think, like, oh, okay, yeah, that's that's cool, right? Like 700k. Yeah. That sounds that sounds yeah. really good, you know. Um, how many but, filmmakers? Um, yeah. 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 It, it depends how many filmmakers there are, and. Um, Journey is one that is on Stash right now, um, which I okay. don't know if it'll, it'll still be on there by the time, you know, um, that people see this. But uh, and the reason is because when they put it up on there, they got rid of all my music, like they striped all my music, and I was like, Whoa. how do, how can you, yeah, how can you show my film and stripe all my music? And we have proper licensing for it. We have all those yeah. things, but. I think YouTube is getting flagged with it because some of them are universal and a bunch of other stuff. So I was like, it's almost better for you to tell me that they can't do it rather than to strike my music yeah. and take away all that. You know, there's like hard mutes during those, so whole, those sections. And it just, it kind of, oh, wow. it kind of sucks That's because wild. you're kind of, yeah, you're altering the stuff, but, but I love the idea. You know, I do like the idea. I, I would rather it be on my channel. Um, but, um, I, you know, this is one of those things that I think it is the future. Um, you know, a lot of people are cutting out from Netflix and from Disney and all the all the um, pay um, pay subscription stuff. So it makes sense on, you know, why 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 YouTube would win. Um, but, you know, YouTube has this whole thing with with the ads and placement and some of our films, you know, have uh, cuss words and have those kinds of things. So I don't know if that means if it'll just live there and actually not be monetized, you know? So those are all good yeah. questions. And, you know, who knows if like just their next terms of services that changes automatically stops you making money. So uh, it, it it's always better to have your own fan base and to build them up, you know, that way people sure. can, yeah. they know like you're dropping your next thing, but yeah, you know, just like local indie bands, you know, if they had, you know, a, th a couple, like a thousand followers in each city, I mean, they can make a living, you know, um, you know, going around and, doing you know 200 300 person shows you know well it's a great example and i like i like i talked to the bands that i have filmed over the years so much and you know spotify as a consumer i love spotify right but as an artist yeah. it's killing them because they're not they're making nothing and and so i i almost think musicians have it worse than filmmakers but you can see where it could be going uh when you know you look at the amazon payout for independent filmmakers via film hub or whatever um, and so, yeah, it's all about no matter if you're a, I don't know, a filmmaker, a musician or a painter, it's, it's like you said, finding, finding those core hard core audience that, you know, that, that love your work. And that's, that's hard to do, but if you can do it, yeah. um, you know, that's and, awesome. Well, and I do, and I do recommend like, even for you to, to, you know, keep building up the YouTube thing. Cause even if it's turning on the camera for 15 minutes and just talking about your experience with anything, like. You have no, you have no idea how that stuff pops off, and like people are like just start asking you questions, and that turns to its whole thing. the The main thing is taking that time to like, what you know. I've I've done the thing before where I I like wrote a big old board of like, these are all the yeah. videos I'm going to do yeah. right, and uh, and then I'm yeah. like, you know, when when I'm about to film it, I'm like, wow, that's boring, and that's boring, and that, you know, and uh, yeah. so I I just look at it as like, yeah, let's try to let's try to eliminate some of that and just build a station where I can sit down and do my, do, do these YouTube videos. And, uh, and it's worked. And, you know, I've seen it every time, like, uh, this past, like uh, three weeks ago, I launched, I dropped five videos, like kind of back to back to back. And my numbers just like, like started skyrocketing. And then I got bored, oh. <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but th that happens when you're spending that time doing it, you know? And it's cool that you're not so precious about because that's my problem. Uh, that I'm like, ah, oh, it's yeah. it's got to be it's got to be cinematic. And then, but you're saying you're like you just for the YouTube stuff, you grab your brother, he films you, and yeah. it's no big deal, yeah. uh, and you don't overthink it because then they can check out your your actual filmmaking work, and it's cinematic and awesome. So you have a clear delineation, yeah. which is which is smart, you know. Yeah, and it's like the whole thing where it's like you know, um, you, you show them the beater car, right? And then you come out with the nice car, and it's like a miles behind. You know, it's just like crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 
you know, you're you're showing it off, and uh, well, we I take the kind of thing of that mechanics, you know, car is never fixed, but that's the mechanic you you need, right? And uh, okay, yeah. so yeah, my YouTube channel, yeah, it's not going to be the the best. I mean, you can go to you know Gerald Undone or to Peter McKinnon or those guys, you know, um, yeah. and uh, but if you want to know, like, um, you know, if you want to know how to film like that and why they film like that, then you come to my channel, and I'll you know I can explain like I can explain you know why and you know you know why they feel that they need to look that way you know and for us it's like do you want me to do that one day for my for my youtube video yeah i mean i can do the same thing but it's it's too much work <laughs> and i think people yeah. just want content yeah. so so i think it's uh, it's fine now do you ha do you have a set schedule or is it more just like <clears throat> if there's a week if there's a month you want to just do one video or like you said, three weeks ago, you do five videos. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you feel like kind of thing. Yeah. Um, well, you know, you can't take my YouTube because, I mean, if you're basing it off of like, oh, you know, you only have like, I have like 1.5K subscribers or I forgot what it, where we're at. I don't even think we're at 2,000. But I have, I do have brand deals and I have all this thing. I think it's because of my Instagram. But um, okay. really, you know. I would say that if I wanted to be more serious about it, then I would have a schedule. But I did see, like, for example, I filmed with Peter McKinnon a couple of years ago and right before he was going to hit the 3 million mark. And I remember that he was, um, uh, I can't say too much about it, but I just didn't remember how he had a certain day that he had to upload and he was itching like, you know, and a lot of the YouTubers are like that. They have a schedule that they have to hit yeah. um, to keep their to keep everything happening. And it's also based on the agent that you're given with uh, with YouTube. I don't know if things have changed like that in the past two or three years, but we did so much content with influencers that we we had like strict deadlines with each of them um, to submit stuff, and we knew that um, that they had to drop things like that. If not, um, like for some reason, the algorithm wouldn't pick them up. It was like scheduled TV, you know, almost oh, like wow. the same. Okay. Yeah, so it was it was kind of kind of well, crazy, and sure. I was like, and I and I felt myself that I don't I I don't want to live that way, which is why I live in Houston. Houston is chill; yeah. it's very laid back. Uh, you know, um, you know, we're we're laid back until we're driving on the freeway. Then you got to go. Yeah. You know? okay. Um okay. But yeah. besides that, yeah, uh, I don't think that. Um, I do, I do have a very laid back, um, lifestyle and mindset in terms of, um, even YouTube. Gotcha. And now is, is there, are there like other, um, I don't know, technologies or like, what are you excited about in the future in terms of like, I don't know, film stuff. Is it cameras or technology or whatever? Is there anything that you're well, eager to explore kind of, or try out? Well, it's kind of funny is that everyone thought that the new Alexa camera, which we're, we're Alexa owners, I have an Alexa Mini LF and an Alexa Mini. Um, they're my well, they're my investors, but um, I I house them. You know, I take care of them. I use them yeah. um, and uh, all that stuff. Uh, but uh, a lot of people thought the Alexa thirty five was going to come and kind of like kill those cameras in a sense. Um, yeah. And I haven't even touched one. I haven't seen one in person. I really to be very honest, did not care about it. Um, and, uh, there are some interesting new cameras that are coming out. Um, but ultimately like th they all do the same thing at this point. And wh what I explained to people is like, if you want, um, if you want to spend money on the front end or back end, that's how, that's how it works with cameras today. The Alexa, you spend money on the front end, meaning that your DI process or the digital intermediate, the coloring process, it's a lot less strenuous on the back end but you pay for it on the front end by paying for such a camera. Um, yeah, or sure. you can use, a, you can use a red or, or black magic or anything else. Or even that Sony, as you saw in FX, the FX three, you know, on creator, yep. uh, cause the DI, yep. the DI process is the same for all. Um, the, the difference is that the skin tones just look right on the Alexa, you know, right out the box. Um, sure. and, uh, so it's, it's easier to kind of go into creative mode after you get it. Um, but for every other camera, you have to you're gonna pay a lot more on the back end to make it look polished. But you can do it. Like all of them can look right. very very nice. Right. Um, so I, I'm excited. Uh, there are some new things that Cook is doing. They brought out some lenses that are super tiny. They're called the Cook SP3s, and these lenses they're about a pound each. 
but they give you that cook look. Um, so normally, if you know anything about cooks, they're like five pounds. They're at least five pounds. Even their smallest lenses, they're like usually five pounds. But these lenses are about you know that big. You can fit a full set in your backpack with a nice small camera, okay. and they're yeah. made. Yeah. They're they're made E mount and RF mount, so they're made for like small mirrorless oh. cameras. Yeah, Which tells perfect. you that yeah. even even the big guys, like the the massive companies, are soon going to create nothing but lenses that fit mirrorless cameras, that are for pick up and go creators, filmmakers like you and I. That hey, mm-hmm. let's shoot a short. Like we're in this awesome location. We got some people that can act. Like let's just make stuff happen. Sure. Yeah. And let's just yeah, you know, that. and we might just yeah, and let's just shoot. You know, and. uh and that tells you that, you know, these companies that are, you know, normally a, a set of cook lenses of five lens set, it starts at around 85K. Well, this set of lenses is 21, 20, 22K, okay. which sure. yep. you're just like, hey, I can get the cook look, use an FX3, shoot full <laughs> yeah. frame. And, yeah. you know, I'm not breaking the bank. Actually, I can probably fit all that into my budget and then use it for my next. And your backpack. Yeah. That's yeah. right. You know. So yeah. there's some exciting stuff in that. Um, there's stuff that scares me to death, which, you know, like AI, it, it, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's just one of those things that it is going to take over. It's not if, but when, um, the whole thing with vector, you know, if you know anything about vector versus, um, uh, you know, doing vectors versus, uh, pixels where, you know, uh, the reason why all the real graphic designers do stuff in, uh, in design or in design and, uh, what's the illustrator, you know, because mm-hmm. vectors can be multiplied by mathematically, and th- they'll never look blurry. Or and AI yep. is completely ran through vectors, and it just kind of makes you think: sure. Does resolution matter anymore? Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah. yeah AI, AI is freaking me out, man. Are, are you on the? Are you using Chat GPT or those things yet? For you, I'm or? not. <laughs> Everybody in my circle is is wanting me to. Um, and I, I'm so, I'm. It's funny. On one hand, I'm I'm so sc- I'm scared for all the same reasons, and also for like mm-hmm. just the idea of of any any AI that goes into the creative process really throws me off in a big big way. Um, the only part of it that <clears throat> that does excite me is is I always you know as a kid I always like like all of us right wanted to like be George Lucas right and like do mm-hmm. <laughs> do the the sci fi fantasy. And then it's sort of, you know, as you get older, you're just like, especially at the budget, you know, on independent films, it's like, that's not going to happen unless you sell an IP or X, Y, and Z. And so the only part of AI that excites me is just like, gosh, the, there's a way down the road where you could, you could do a, a Star Wars, right? Uh, for mm-hmm. And shoot it the way that like, I like to shoot movies, you know, like really low budget and, and let's, let's, let's have fun making a movie. Um, and I, I saw, um, I saw a, uh, a pl- there's a, there's a studio in New England who does the, the, uh, you know, the technology they do for Mandalorian, the, um, mm-hmm. the volume uh, so of brain brain. yeah. And I'm just saying like, gosh, we're, we're almost here and we're not there yet in terms of like low budget and independent filmmaking. But so that part of it does excite me is to, is to kind of democratize, uh, more, ambitious science fiction fantasy type filmmaking and i would love that um so i do have a love hate if that yeah. makes any sense with it uh well, so for special so effects it, yeah yeah so you just said that i mean this is what's 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 crazy about it is that i got hit up by a company called uh, jet set lightcraft and they have a vfx app okay oh. and uh they're, pro- they're probably gonna love that i'm shouting them out right now because <laughs> sure. um they are um it's crazy what they're doing and uh, they're pretty much they said hey you know how the iphone you know has this little uh lidar lidar thing and for whatever yeah. reason apple decided to do that it's the same technology that they're using for mapping and pixel mapping um so yeah. Yeah. they they pretty much have a little um adapter that you put on your camera any camera you want and it'll read okay. the the environment and you can use unreal engine and replace the whole environment with your subject so it'll automatically yeah. do it for you. It's insane. Oh it blew my mind when they showed me the example. And they're like, oh, yeah, just connect. Let me connect to your phone. And, of course, like I'm like just scanning around, and they make my room change to a different room, and I have a fireplace, and I can walk through it with my phone. And they're like, okay, imagine that you have your cinema camera under it, 
And now, you know, we do the proper calibration and now you can walk around and you have all the lens data, all the geographical area uh, data, all the, even the stabilization data, all that's sent back to your VFX artist. They create the, the world in Unreal and you can shoot your entire thing. Like if you're on a volume wall anywhere in the world. And that to me was just like, what? You know? Yeah. That's, um, that's crazy, so, yeah. so yeah, light craft, uh, light craft from jet set. Um, yeah, it's pretty insane and it's pretty cool. We're, and we're, we're kind of hoping to use some of their technology, um, for the next film that we're going to do. If we're going to do some like, um, crazy, uh, like we say, we're going to do a horror film. Um, and we're yeah. thinking about doing tracking with a face and being able to change out the face and, uh, of, of the character. And we're wondering if that will, the pixel mapping will, will work for all that. And they think it will. Sure. So, um, that's a collaboration we're trying to put together for the next film that's, where yeah, we can, cool. we can apply VFX. Yeah. On a low budget. Yeah. To try. I mean, I know there's like runway there's, um, I started, uh, testing out Pika this last week and it's, it's, it's the technology is so inspiring and cool. Um, f- for me, like personally, when I look at it, I'm like, it's not there. And this, like the time it would take me to, to make a movie using this technology, I could go actually make a movie, you know, myself right. granted, not a special effects movie, but, um, it's, it's the, the, it's more inspiring. Like what, what's, if this is where we are a year or year and a half into it really accelerating, what's it going to be, you know, a year from now. And that's, that's, it's exciting, but it's scary too at the same time. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that's the, the cool thing. And that's why I look at YouTube and that platform and everything else that's happening. And I'm like, yeah, I can see YouTube being the future for sure in terms of even where, you know, people are creating, like some of these influencers or YouTubers creating their own films. Like, I don't remember them, but they did very well with them. And that's because they built up their own audience. They have, you know, sure. a million subscribers and now they're releasing their films and, you know, all of a sudden it goes viral. And when it goes viral, it, 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 um, kind of goes across other audiences and it picks up. So, yeah, I mean, um, technology is scary. It also helps tell your stories. And I think that's overall, that's really what I want, right? I want people to watch my film Uh, where they paid me for it too. Then great. That means I can relax a little bit or I can make something else, you know, but, um, but yeah, it's, you know, what, (laughs) and I think what you're also touching on is, um, and that's this is something that's taken me forever to, to get to is is not waiting for the phone to ring, you know, like mm-hmm. to say, hey, you know, uh, here's the budget or, or here's here's we're going to buy your script. It's more just, hey, taking the reins of what you want to do uh, yourself. And, and that's uh, that's a key thing, you know. And so when you start, did you start off also like just funding all your short films or did you find people or? You were just like, hey, I have this extra money. Let's try to make this. Or did you credit credit card it like uh, like uh, a couple other filmmakers? Uh, uh, you know, yeah, a, a bit of everything. Um, in the beginning, yeah, of course, it was it was all credit carded and and doing my own thing. Um, and the weird thing for me is, so I I lived in L.A. originally for for quite a bit, and then um, I I made a bunch. I made a movie that was very personal to me, and it won some festival awards. This is going way back. And it didn't, it didn't do anything for my career. It didn't sell. I couldn't get a distributor. And then I said, you know, screw it. I'm going to do a horror movie. I, I don't even know much about horror, but at that time it was like, oh yeah, if you do a horror movie. And so I, I, I worked with a producer's rep and we, you know, he's like, okay, at the five minute mark, you need to have a kill. And at the 10 minute mark, you've got to, you know, show some nudity. And I was like, oh God, this is so not me. Um, and I made it. And I was just like, but I'm doing this because it will sell. Everybody says it will sell. And that, then like a year later, I'm done the movie and the movie, that market had had been saturated and it totally died. And I, I learned a lesson. I'm like, I'm never going to do something that, that I'm not passionate about again. Um, but what's interesting is, is, is so I moved back East thinking like, oh, okay, it didn't, you know, it didn't work out, whatever. But, but back East, then <clears throat> the, the film that I was passionate about, some people saw, and that's what got me hired to to work on other people's. So I was a director for hire for projects and those were, were much bigger projects than um, budgets and working with kind of recognizable people on it. And, and that led to a a, a screenwriting for hire, a career. So it was sort of like it, 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 it it reinstilled in me what I should have known all along, um, which is just write what you're passionate about. And, and, you know, because somebody will see that and, and um, connect with it versus, 
really phoning it in. And I, I, I definitely learned that lesson not to phone it in um, or, or to do something that's not, that just feels wrong. And um, cause at least if you fail doing something uh, that you, that you're passionate about, at least you had fun doing it and it was, you know, you, you, it's a good life experience or you learned a lesson saying, Oh, maybe I, sh- I should have like started uh, act act two earlier or whatever. Or, <laughs> yeah. you know. um, so yeah, that that's, um, so it, it, I'm all over the place. So some of it was, was, um, I did an Indie, Indiegogo campaign for one of them films. So it, it's really been all over the place. And, um, I wish there was a better model, like the model where it's like, <laughs> Oh, every, every year I know, I know where the money's coming from to, you know, but you, you, it's, uh, it's a weird business. That's for sure. Yeah. For, for my films, I kind of had to do a little bit of the same. Um, but you know, I had, I, I was just lucky that, um, some people saw the kind of work that I did and they're like, well, what, Hey, you, you make films, right? So what could you do with this amount of money? And I was like, well, you know, I don't know. Let, let's find out. And little by little, like that's how I kind of built it up. But almost everything that I, I have done or am creating is kind of, a lot of it is based off my kind of commercial work and my demo reel and things like that, where people come to mm-hmm. me and they're like, Hey, can we make this film? And can we, can we do that? And I'm, I always have to like, you know, uh, instill that like it takes a lot of people, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of money. Um, what's cool about Fight Boy, the film that you know, uh, our our latest film is that that one we created in a way to make it super cheap, shoot only ten hour, uh, shoot oh, oh, ten days, shoot six yep. to eight hour days, um, which is insane. The six to eight hour days, and, and f- yeah, yeah, feed our pe- feed our people like kings. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and yeah, and that, it was a a great experience in the sense that we got everything we needed. We had 72 pages that we had to get through. The film ended up being 73 pages. (laughs) So we we shot like pretty, pretty, like very, very close to the page count. And sure. um, Yeah. But yeah, we had 10, uh, 10 days to do it and we're, we're able to make it happen. But, um, a lot of planning and, you know, just having the ability to have someone and be like, Hey, how much can you do with this? I'm like, well, let's write something for that market. Let's create it and let's see if we can make it happen. But we're going to put these stipulations. That's that's really impressive. I mean, six to <laughs> the problem with indie yeah. film is even yeah. even the best laid plans. You know, you you always are going at crazy hours, and uh, but to do it six to eight hours, that's like uh, that's like a a spa or luxury resort or something. You know, it's- yeah. Yeah. We did it to where since it was all done in Houston, we, you know, I think we only paid for one location. Um, but, uh, everything else was kind of, you know, gifted to us. We we're like trying to be respectful of everyone's time. Hey, we're only going to sure. be here at your bar for eight hours. Like no more, no less. Uh, while know, it was we'll open be, or, or, or while it was yeah. open. Yeah. We're like, what's okay. your, what's, what's your dead day Mondays. Okay. Perfect. We're shooting on there on Monday. Well, you know, we'll, we'll mm-hmm. shoot this and that and we'll get it done. Um, shot all our scenes out. Um, pretty much we're like editing while we're shooting, right? Because I'm, I'm like changing angles, but not going and getting coverage. So it's like we're living with this oh. cut, you know? So it's wow. like oh, we're, wow. you know, we're, cut, we're cutting while we're, we're filming pretty much. You know, there is nothing else to cut to. And um, to make it dynamic, you have to change up the camera and change it in different levels. Mm-hmm. So when you watch that film, like there is nothing else to cut to, <laughs> you know? So when you, yeah. um, you know, we, ch- yeah, we check that out. It's, it's one of those things where we chose six to eight hour days because, you know, in our industry, everyone, like you said, we shoot 10 to 12 hours, sometimes 16 hours. Um, and it's for me, as I'm getting older, um, I realize that I can't, I can't really live that way no more. It's, it's like a young sure. man's yeah. game. If you, if you do that, you know, and, uh, I rather have a regular life. I'd rather be able to, you know, wash my clothes. I'd rather be able to have a full <laughs> night's sleep. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't want to drive 12 hours. I mean, work 12 hours and then drive another hour back home since we're in Houston. So um, a lot of people were appreciative of that. And a lot of them, like when we're done at eight hours, they're just kind of like, like, okay, well, what do we do now? And we're like, go home, like leave, you know, don't stay right. here. Just yeah. yeah. Go, re- go rest up, live your life and come back. We got another day tomorrow. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping to build that into mo- more of my sets where we shoot more yeah. days, but we do standard, you know, um, like six to eight hour days, 10 hours max on, on a day if we need to. That's wild. That's, uh, that's, 
that's something to strive for definitely do you do you have a dream project that you you'd love to do like if budget was no option um man i i i guess i, I don't know i mean we have so many scripts right now written um mm-hmm. that there are some that i really i really would like to to do some of them are in mexico like in the yucatan peninsula area um okay. where we can go into the caves and go into all these things like I just think of on, on the more visual side, you know, how I'd love yeah. to see that. I'd love to see like a beautiful silhouette with, you know, rays of sun, like coming through a, through a thing. And then you're seeing water kind of envelop, you know, I have like a bunch of these um, images in my brain that I'd love to, to film in some way. Um, also like, a uh, we've done some older, older retro, um, films. Uh, there's one called Gloria that's on prime, uh, that we did with someone. It's a short film, but it's probably our, our more, one of my more beautiful looking films, just the style because it was, it was meant, it was, I think it was meant to be in the seventies, eighties. Um, and, uh, I just love the way they do that. So a time piece would be really cool. Um, and oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, outside of that, um, man, I, I just want to be in cool locations and get, you know, beautiful imagery. So <laughs> yeah, you know, wherever that, wherever that takes us. Yeah. Um, but no, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have a dream project yet. Maybe one day. Sure. Yeah. How about you? Do, you? do you have one? I mean, not, yeah. I mean, I'd love to do it. Like I said earlier, like a star Warsy type fantasy. If, if in technology a vineyard in France, yeah, but no, <laughs> the vineyard thing, right? We're like traveling. I love traveling and filming. Yeah. Like I'd love to, I'd love to just, I don't know. Like, I, so I had some friends and they haven't released this film yet. And they, they've shot it like five years ago. Um, but they, but they basically, they drove from Maryland to LA and they over the course of uh 10 days and they made a movie doing it and they basically posted ads on craigslist or 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 backstage or whatever for Mm -hmm. actors in those towns and they kind of auditioned them online and they just shot the movie as they drove um and they had a script though they improv some of it and they met up with the actors in each town and then did did the scene in that town and it's um, again, they're still editing it. It's, I really enjoyed the movie, but even more than that, I was very inspired by the movie and I'd love to do something like, like that, but like around the world. That's pretty cool. You know, like, yeah. Like do that cool. around the world and, and cast in different countries. And, uh, I don't know. I just, I just thought that some, that, um, it could be a cool movie and just as a life experience, uh, as a creative experience, it could be really, uh, really a fun way to do it, you know? Yeah, we did we did one of those competitions uh, called it was like four four corners or something, part of the forty eight okay. hour thing. Yeah, um, yep. and there's one that was like an international competition, and we got some friends in um, we got some friends in uh, Amsterdam to film half the short that we did, and we did uh, kind of like a sci fi short. Um, and w- originally, we're gonna do Amsterdam, Mexico, Peru. Um, and wow. that way okay. we, yeah. we get all those, all those vantage points. Um, we're just trying to find anywhere that had like fast internet so they can, and they could match all the equipment and all the gear and all the style. And, uh, that one, um, I think it's on my YouTube called our sons. Um, if not, I'll probably okay. put it up pretty soon, but, uh, it's like a documentary and like a fake documentary about, uh, uh, all the, it's called our sons uh, because it's like. Um, all the sons and all the males and stuff start dying and it's a really cool piece because you're getting it in um uh you know you're getting the u.s perspective and then you're getting the amsterdam perspective and that's something that we're thinking about to to do that we could travel everywhere and create like i said we have so many scripts and so many different um ideas and and concepts that we'd love to create um but that was one that kind of reminds me of that like it's and the only thing is that I'd love to travel there, right? Not just hit up our friends and like just yeah, yeah, not go just show up and, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, we I, I love that. I mean, like I said, the global connection is so cool to be able to go. We we just had a group of Salvadorians um, come up here and they filmed a uh, a feature and we took care of them. We took care of all the all the equipment and all that stuff and. They're like, hey, okay. come to El Salvador. Like, come to El Salvador. We'll take care of you like you took care of us. And I'm like, dude, like, is there oh. something I could shoot in El Salvador, you know? Yeah. Uh, because that's such a cool idea um, just to be able to to have uh, people that are willing and, and able to create something there. Um, well, and, you, um, so, you know, people, yeah. In South, um, South Africa. Ask, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you, are you, I mean, your, your next film, are you already working on your next film or you're in the writing process or what is your process right now? Yeah. So I, I um, I really, uh, uh, COVID I was about to shoot. There was a shoot film I was going to shoot in March of 2020 and it fell apart obviously. And it just that those years I sort of just said, I'm just going to build a war chest of scripts. So so I'm going to make up for lost time when I can film again. So, um, so yeah, I, I, um, I, I'm right now I'm, I'm trying to figure out the next project and I'm, do I do something that's more, um, uh, expanding what I'm doing, which is I, I do a lot of, I call them, uh, well, they're dramedies, but I call them character comedies, like comedy, drama, relationship, um, uh, you know, like sideways or that sort of thing. Um, do I do, do I, do I expand that? And I've got a genre project. Um, do I do that? Or do I continue the brand? I've got another wine project and it's sort of like the artist versus the marketing. Not that I don't want to do the wine project. Right. But I've made a lot of inroads and connections and I'm learning to promote this new movie, which takes place in wine country. So it's like, do I, do I continue that brand? Do I do another movie in wine country? And go back to that audience. And um, now that I know people over there, maybe I could shoot in some more vineyards and really expand that. And that's exciting to me. Or do I, from an artistic standpoint, do something that's totally different? And both roads are awesome, uh, but I just don't know what I'm going to choose yet. So that's kind of where I'm at. (laughs) Yeah, I think you're the same. You have that business slash creative, like that are yeah, always talking yeah. about each other, right? Go back and yeah. forth. Um, but 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 it's it's different from what I was saying in the example that I did years ago, which is it's not like me deciding between do I do a movie I like or do I do a schlocky horror movie that uh that I'm writing by the book. Mm. You know, it's it's not like that. It's 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 two choices that I like both of them. I just I just don't know which direction I'm going to go yet. So. Yeah, I, I think we're on the same boat on that one because the next film, like we said, we might. It, it really, man, it really depends. Like right now, my producer, one of the producers that we have, um, Marius Cloving, really cool guy. Um, he's actually a production coordinator for um, Cobra Kai, um, and he started oh, okay. interning with us when he was eight, when he was eighteen, uh, and oh, wow. he. Yeah, he was like, "Hey, what should I do?" I'm like, uh, "Leave, like, go, <laughs> like, leave Houston, yeah. go make something yeah. of yourself, you know. Don't be like yeah. us, you know." <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, no, he's in. He went to Atlanta, and he's killing it out there. And he helped produce uh, Fight Boy. Uh, more on just the logistics side, um, I I found all the financing and stuff, but uh, he does a great job. And um, so they're looking over the, our latest script right now. And um, ultimately, like, we have like a couple other scripts that we're we're also thinking about, but it's always that struggle as a filmmaker where you have to be on the business side and on the creative side. Like I still have many things I want to change on that script. Um, but then the money we actually can raise is probably what's going to determine it. And then we have to be more creative on that. Right. Um, how do you find yourself, um, on that? Like, uh, you know, do you feel like all your, your budgets are usually meeting where, you know, meeting the script or are you basing your, your script off the budget or, you know, how are you working? No, that? I'm, 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 I've become very used to writing, especially since I've been the DP, I writing towards what I know I can get the money for. Um, but that doesn't mean, um, uh, I mean, well, yeah, I guess it means compromise in the sense that I'm not going to do a you know, big shootout necessarily, or, uh, or a, a, if I was doing a broad comedy, you know, like a big, Pratt fall gag where somebody falls off a building and hits a glass you know, table. But, um, but, but no, yeah, I, I probably write the script toward the budget. And, and when I write scripts, which I used to do all the time and I, and I still do once in a while, I write scripts to be like, uh, just as a sample or to sell or something. Um, right. I sometimes have to remind myself when I do those scripts, but hey, budget's not an op- budget's not a problem right. here. Yeah, or, yeah. or actually, when when I wrote when I wrote the 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 novel, I wrote sequels to my tropical film in novel form, and those were fun because I was like, oh, what if I had an unlimited budget? Yeah, what if what if I could do a private island that like you know, yeah, th- that yeah. all these zip lines and volcanoes exploding and all this stuff, and uh, I and so it once I switched my mindset, I I could. I could do that, but it, it, I, I, I was held back in the beginning being like, well, how would I shoot this? And, 
how would I cheat this? You know, so it, it's a it's a different it's a different way of looking at it. You know, one thing I noticed as well on your uh, the two films that I, that I saw Gap Weekend and the one um, um, right before you had the same actor yeah. right on in in both. I did. Films, yeah. did not. yeah, I uh-huh. did. I did. So I, yeah. do you I, do you have that thing where you're find someone that you really work with and you know and and you're kind I, of like is he in your other next two films as well or how how does that work? Um, yeah, he, he is. He's the lead in the, so I've shot two subsequent films. He's the lead in the, the third one and, um, he's a smaller role in the fourth one. Um, but yeah, I, but all, a lot of the cast goes back and forth and I love that. I love filmmaker. I mean, I'm, I love filmmakers who do that and then keep using the cast, but also I like it from a, from a, um, a practical producing standpoint and a writer standpoint from a producing standpoint, you know, it, when you work with a, a, a um, a collaborator who's <laughs> who's a challenge it's it's uh it, it really is tough on a tight budget you know uh mm-hmm. and so when you find somebody that you just click with and and not only are they very talented but you like to hang out with them too i mean i you know i like making movies with my friends and so that's so that's what i love um from a producing standpoint but from a writing standpoint yeah it makes it easier to write because i know what they're good at and i know their cadence and the dialogue. And so, um, so yeah, it's, it's, if I really try to do that as much as I can and I, I probably do it too much. And once in a while I'm like, <laughs> I really should do casting. I, I shouldn't just go back to the well. Um, so, um, but I do, but yeah, so I'd say, no, especially actually, the, I love that. Yeah. 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 I love that, that part of it because yeah, it's like you're building people up. You're seeing how their craft is getting better. I mean, you're putting them in situations that, you know, that you want to see them succeed. So, you know, I, I enjoy that, especially when these people understand your back, you know, they have your back. And, you know, um, I think that's why we, we do it a lot too. You know, we'll, we'll recast a lot of the people um, that we know can deliver, you know? And uh, so that's awesome. That's why I saw that. I was like, Oh, that's pretty cool. And you can keep growing together. But what the other cool thing is when I, when I was hired for a bigger project uh, a few years ago and I, um, you know, you had to cast, recognizable actors but the su- the supporting actors i was like oh i'm gonna get my crew in here you know like <laughs> i'm gonna write that role for the funny my funny guy who's always plays the funny guy and i'm gonna write you know and so it, it, it helps them but also it helps me because i know okay well i'm on an unfamiliar set but i've got some some i've got some people on the set that i'm really comfortable working with and i know they're gonna they're gonna nail it and so that's fun too you know Yo, Todd, uh, where can we find your work and, you know, what, what do you have coming up? Yeah, sure. So, uh, well, you can find all my work and the links to everything, my books and my films on just my name, Todd And, uh, and I've got the films in there. The new film is called gap weekend and, uh, it's, uh, takes place in wine country and it's about a, uh, a guy who's, who's dumped by the, his childhood sweetheart and he he said he tries dating for a while and he goes, I'm never going to find anybody again. And in a drunken rage, he posts a manifesto online and he says, I just want a weekend up in wine country with somebody not for kissing or sex or anything. I just want to like pretend we're like a long term couple because that's what he misses most. Um, and he finds so somebody actually responds. But what he's really doing is he's trying to recreate his engagement trip with his, that he had with his wife with this new woman. Um, so that's what it is. It's a comedy drama. It takes place all in one country. Um, so you can find it on Amazon, Verizon, Spectrum, and we're going to have new platforms coming up over the next few months, but it's toddnorwood.net. Uh, what about yourself? Where can you find your work? Well, um, you can find me on a couple of places. Instagram, this is Filmatic. Uh, you can check out my YouTube, also under Filmatic. And then my website is orlandobriones.com. Um, and there you'll get to see a lot of the work that I do. Um, and I'm mainly a cinematographer. Um, we make a lot of fun. We call it a uh, cinematography and that's to trip people up and uh, let them know that we're uh, serious, but not serious, um, filmmaking. Um, we're, uh, we, we love to just have fun on our YouTube and really, uh, just kind of promote that, you know, this doesn't have to be as serious. Um, we have a new project that was released, um, in September called fight boy. Uh, you can go to watchfightboy.com um, or uh, it's actually going to be released pretty soon 
on Tubi and a couple other platforms is on Amazon Prime right now. Um, the easiest way to explain that uh, film is that it's a kind of a Scott Pilgrim uh, plus, you know, um, Friday. And it, it's a guy that gets, um, re, you know, goes to his high school reunion, finds the five bullies that beat him up. And then he goes through and starts legally fighting them through the Texas Mutual Combat Law. And if you don't know about the Texas Mutual Combat Law, it's a law that allows you to uh, legally fight someone as long as there's not severe bodily injury or uh, <laughs> damage to uh, any uh, uh, to any property damage. So it's a, it's a fun film. Um, it's whimsical. It's just comedy. Um, uh, it has a lot of language. Um, it, it's based in the urban market. It's kind of where we grew up, and it's one of those things where um, you know we're, it, it's a fun movie. It's a fun quick watch. It's only about seventy five minutes, but I, I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it. Um, and I really appreciate you guys um, checking that out and any of the other stuff that we've created. Um, and I think that's the most important thing out of anything. And uh, thank you to Film Courage for allowing us to yeah. uh, hang out and to get to meet Todd. Man, so yeah. cool. It was a lot of fun, definitely. And now you've inspired me. I got to start my YouTube channel for filmmaking. So thank you.